Hello Kindred Spirits, Linda Smith Davis here. And today is such a beautiful day, I thought we would work in the garden and then we would chat and have a little brunch under the tree in our backyard. Enjoy! Good morning, kindred spirits. Linda Smith Davis here with New England Fine Living. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm outside today. I don't have a microphone on and traffic is picked up at this point. We are on a, um, a main road here, but I thought I'd take you in the garden today. We had a major storm blow through a few nights ago, two nights ago actually, and we had little damage here. We had two trees come down and I actually went metal detecting under one of the tree ball roots. I've done that a lot and I find pretty cool things under some of them. Um, I actually found a horseshoe. I'm going to say horse correctly because my husband teases me when I say horseshoe, which is how I pronounce it. Um, so I did find that and I found some old glass and that tree I was told by an arborist previously is probably 1890s to 1900s because uh, they're cork trees and that was a fad to plant them at that point. So I didn't even know we had cork trees on the property and I think that's pretty cool. Um, but today I'm going to be planting some rhubarb. I moved the urns that were in front of our little garden here. I moved them off to the edge of the garden and at one point I'm even going to I think stain them a little darker. The pure white is just not for me but we'll let that slide right now. So I'm putting in the rhubarb and then during the storm my peonies, at least one group of the peonies, a lot of them bent over and snapped. That's how strong this wind was. They uh, and they're not even that tall. They're only about say 20 inches and they broke so I'm gonna cut the ones that snapped and hopefully be able to bring them inside I don't know if you can force peonies but I'm going to certainly try and then I'm going to put some metal rings around them and hopefully get them up nice and straight for for the future why don't we go in the garden and get some work done it's Sunday right now for me and uh, my husband just went off to buy himself a golf club. I'm slowly becoming a golf widow again because they've opened up the courses. So um, he's like going in full force. He's been uh, going there and, um, but honestly, he's like, do you mind? I'm like, I have been craving some a long time. Does that sound weird? Um, I love my husband dearly, but um, you know, it's been what, two and a half months. I, I do love this a long time. I, this quarantine hasn't been too hard for me. Um, I'm an introvert, it's maybe hard to tell, but I like being alone. Um, so let's get in this garden and let's work on some things that I've been wanting to get done. What I'm doing right now is I'm planting some rhubarb in urns that were left from the previous owners. I moved them from the gate and I put them on either end of this fenced in area and at one point I'll probably paint these a little different color and I can see you know one is broken already but they're they're nice to have plants in and it really sets off the entrance of the garden nicely and down the road as I mentioned in a past video I'll be replacing and rebuilding the fence and all the the boxes inside but I'm enjoying my garden time right now so I figured Put the rhubarb in here, they'll get nice and big, hopefully, if they survive in these planters. And it will be just my first step to getting some fresh rhubarb for my rhubarb strawberry pie. little peonies now this is this is my hundred plus year old plant that has moved with me for every house that I've been to I put it in my purchase and sale whenever I go to sell the home and we'll be doing the same with this one the storm 
can see here that snapped quite a few. So I'm going to clean this up, put some rings around it. I bought some rings uh, yesterday. We went to a garden center and because these are almost ready to bloom. What I love about this plant here is we got married at our home in June and I knew I wanted to have this in my wedding bouquet. We had a really odd winter and the day before my wedding, it finally bloomed. And I was very excited because I had no other plans. It wasn't going to carry anything else but the flowers that I had from childhood home on forward. So these should be opening up fairly soon and there is a nice amount of buds on this. This poor guy lived in a plastic pot for a year at my sister-in-law's. We're moving our house and I know I had to dig it up. Over there is another peony that I got. It's a white one, as long as it was marked correctly. I'm going to be making this part of the moon garden. You can see out here at night with the moon and it is gorgeous. So I'm interspersing white in here for the moon garden at this house. Um, and then down the road, I'll, I'll, I'll do some more, but that's the plan here. I don't have a specific one location, white only, like I've done at every other house. Oh, and I gotta get these also tied up. I forgot to do that. So we'll get that tied up. I'm gonna be cutting it right above this shoot here so that hopefully it will keep growing and then I'll trim that later inside the house. And I'll be doing that on all of the broken stems. That wind was crazy. I can't believe how they're just actually bent right over. I've never seen that happen with peonies before, except for when they were completely top heavy with the weight of their flowers. Um, and in that, and even then, they just mainly fall over and hit the ground. These are snapped. I don't like about these rings then it makes it look kind of structured and stiff it's kind of like i always say it's kind of like a, a young child in a snowsuit where it's all like can't move that's what i think about a lot of these garden rings and it's, i guess it's worth it so in a past video i talked about my adhd and dyslexia I'm having a really hard time visualizing the way the circle should go in because I'm seeing things not the same way everybody else does. <laughs> Those who have uh, dyslexia can completely understand what I'm talking about. I'm the type that would hold up the hand for left and right because this makes a left, an L. That's how I had to keep uh, teaching myself things like that. So I thought I'd show you another type of ring that I like to use. This, this to me is a lot easier. They just go in and then you stick them in the hole and go around. I'm going to do this with the little white peony because it's so short right now. So I just did some of the gardening and you were just following along, so obviously you know that. But I had a question. Have any of you ever been bit by an assassin bug? And it's a real thing. I never even heard of them until uh, two and a half weeks ago when I picked up a paper napkin of all things and got stung and I thought it was a yellow jacket. And then when I saw this little green tiny little thing. I've seen them before. I thought they were like baby grasshoppers or something. I quickly looked it up, could find nothing, told my daughter. She found it instantly. It is called an assassin bug and what they do is they bite their prey. They're other little bugs so they're kind of good to have in the house and garden because they eat other bugs. 
They bite them with their beak, of all things, inject a fluid that melts them from inside out. I know, nice, right? So, needless to say, two and a half weeks later, still feel it, and of course it says that it could give you parasites in 10 to 20 years. Nice. And it also said what I was reading that it's rare to find them. Okay, two days later I'm going for a walk. Assassin bug. A few nights later, I wake up and I just yawned and stretched and looked on my pillow right next to me. A dead assassin bug. I just need to know who's sending the assassins to my house because it must be Willow. So yeah, that's my story. I just I was just curious if anybody else has been bit by an assassin bug. I'm telling you, it is worse than a yellow jacket. It's worse. Wouldn't wish it upon anybody. But to find out that they say they're rare to find and I've had three of them in my life in the past two weeks or so, it wasn't pleasant. But anyway, just thought I'd share. So what I've done is I just put the wine mesh, wine bottle mesh around the glass. All kindred spirits, the sun came, the sun went, but I'm still going to sit here and enjoy my coffee, read my book, and relax on this Sunday. And what a slow living, a little pampering, a little bit something for myself, enjoy simple pleasures in life. Making little impromptu flower arrangements makes me happy. They'll go in the house and it'll make it feel a little cozy and inviting, so I'm glad that I did it. I thought I would also share that with my table setting here, everything, including the tablecloth, is all consignment. This piece, it was made by Tiffany's for Rose Wharf in Boston. These are Crate and Barrel. My Jane Austen book. I found this at a thrift store. And the table linen. And you know what? To pull this together, I didn't even iron the tablecloth because I wanted to have time out here to enjoy and I don't call ironing a tablecloth enjoying. <laughs> 